Today, I have something really special to share. I'm gonna give you my review on the Kendrick Lamar album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I'm also gonna explain how this album has motivated me as a YouTuber. My own personal stories working with Kendrick Lamar back in 2007 when I was doing mixtapes. My impact some like King Kong, a slow nick right here. And a nice little story on how I introduced Kendrick Lamar to Ruby Rose. Let's go, Rush! Kendrick Lamar review, take one. So I started this YouTube channel three months ago and you guys are gonna learn a lot more about my background in hip hop. So I'm hoping my stories can help motivate you guys in your day-to-day -day life and help you achieve greatness in whatever field you're working in. Hip hop was my first love. It's what has inspired my whole career as a creative. From a skinny 15 year old kid in Canberra collecting vinyl records, taking photographs of rappers, shooting music videos, working with athletes, and most importantly, making friends all over the world through our shared love for this art form, hip hop. As I've been playing Kendrick's album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers over the last couple of days, it's ignited my passion once again for hip hop and reminded me why I love this culture so much. For me, this album is a masterpiece. I've been playing it from start to finish a number of times and I'm enjoying it more and more with every listen. This album is a bit like a therapy session due to Kendrick's openness and vulnerability but that's why I've been enjoying it so much. Kendrick has reminded me again and again the importance of being proud of who you are, where you're from, and being authentic. Being new to YouTube, this is something very difficult in the beginning. You ask yourself, what kind of image should I portray in front of the camera? Do I be myself or should I even uh, create a personality for YouTube? However, listening to Kendrick's album, it's reminded me again, the best thing that you can do is literally just be yourself. In Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Kendrick has been extremely open, honest, forward thinking, and man, his storytelling is insane. A good example of this is on the track, Auntie's Diaries, where he raps about a transgender auntie. This is a huge moment for hip hop, as it's notoriously been known as a homophobic genre. For a Compton rapper from the hood to be educating the hip hop community on transgender issues, I mean, man, this is a, a super special track. Another standout on the album for me is the song Father Time. This is hands down the dopest beat on the album. As soon as the track kicked in, I was like, oh, okay, we got one here. I'm a big fan of Sampha, who provides the honey vocals on the hook. It's the perfect blend of a hard hitting beat, smooth vocals, and some deep lyrics. This is where Kendrick gets extremely vulnerable. On this track, he raps about the tough love that he's had with his father growing up. For me, I grew up without my father, so I'm always curious to hear how other men have had relationships with their dads. I'm not gonna go through all the tracks on the album, but here are a few of my top picks. Die Hard, I've had this track on repeat for two days. It's probably the more commercial friendly track, but I just love the soulfulness on this one. Absolute banger. Savior, the beat on this one, crazy. Purple Hearts with Ghostface, I'm a big Wu-Tang fan, so that's my man right there. What I enjoy about this Kendrick album is each artist that features on a track serves a purpose. Kendrick hasn't just chosen someone because they're trending at the moment and it's gonna help sales. Everything sounds organic and real. This is where I wanna share some stories with you guys from when I was a 22 year old kid from Canberra, Australia, venturing over to the big smoke in Los Angeles. So I just landed an internship with DJ Ski, who was heavy in the hip hop game on the West Coast. And I quickly found myself among some of the biggest names in the industry. At first, when I was in LA, I was super worried to tell everyone that I was Australian because I just thought the hip hop community over there wouldn't accept me. But I quickly realized the biggest advantage I had was actually being Australian, having the accent, offering something different. I learned that Americans, they love different. So before I knew it, I was getting hit up on MySpace, this is back in 2007, by a lot of the local rappers in the LA hip hop scene to host their mixtapes. One rapper that got in touch with me to host his mixtape was a 16 year old kid covered in tattoos who goes by the name Tiger. He asked me to do his first mixtape and do the photo shoot for the album cover. So the reason why I'm telling you guys this story is the mixtape featured a lot of up and coming rappers 
including the names of J-Rock and a young kid called K-Dot, aka Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, you already know who it is. This your boy J-Rock. Boss 5 is top dog MC. Fuck with DJ Russell Tiger. Young and probation mixed it. The hottest thing in the streets right now. What you guys have to remember as you listen to that track, this is 2007. No one knows who Tiger is. No one's got any idea who K-Dot is. I will say, when I first met Tiger, even at 16, covered in tats, he just had something about him. He was an absolute rock star. Even though back then, like his raps weren't that good, he just had the X factor. It's the ghetto, tatted up devil. Yes. Black guy, K dot, J rock, the rap gold medal. We Olympians on any track. Hush, throw you back. Compton the way we running all that. So, what you just heard there was Tiger rapping Australia and back, Compton and Watts. Which, excuse my French, that's fing crazy. You know, he's obviously representing me with the Australia part. Compton, that's Tiger and Kendrick, and Watts, that's J Rock. So you can hear that Kendrick is pretty young there on that track. But for me, sitting here in Melbourne in my studio, listening to that, just knowing that I'm a part of hip hop history. Blows my mind. Even though I didn't work with Kendrick one on one, just to know a skinny kid like me from Canberra in Australia has done two mixtapes with him, and then 15 years later, he's become one of the biggest hip hop artists of all time and shows that dreams can come true. So, what I want you guys to take away from this story is that in the beginning, a lot of people won't see your vision, they won't believe in your dreams, and more than likely, they won't see your talent. Just like Tiger and Kendrick Lamar, a lot of people couldn't see their talent back in 2007. If you're a rapper, a YouTuber, an athlete, an artist, more than likely, in the beginning, you're gonna face these obstacles. If you have a good idea, like my mom has always said to me, go with your gut. And a quote that I love to go by is, stop thinking, just jump. Ignore the negativity around you. That's gonna be one of the best things that you can do personally. Another great tip is building a small team that will support your endeavors. Because as my sister has always told me, you become the five people that you surround yourself with. Because this is what I learned from my experiences doing the mixtapes with Tiger, Kendrick Lamar, and J-Rock, is they work together as a team. They supported each other so they could all win. There's power in numbers. You're gonna find it very difficult getting to the top by yourself. Building a team around you is crucial for success. Right now, I'm building this YouTube channel and I can assure you, not a lot of people can see the vision that I have. I've got a small team around me that believes in the vision for this YouTube channel. We know it's gonna be something special. And on that note, subscribe to my channel. So I've got another story for you guys. Back in 2012, I was on tour with Ruby Rose. She was touring around Australia and I was her personal photographer. So we were at Melbourne airport, lining up to get on a flight to Perth. And in the corner of my eye, I could see a few guys lining up behind me. I looked around and I could see that it was Kendrick Lamar and his DJ Mixed by Ali. So Mixed by Ali and I worked on Tiger's mixtape together. And I turned to him and I was like, yo man, you remember me? And he was like, oh shit, it's DJ Rush. So then he turned to Kendrick and he was like, yo man, it's DJ Ski's prodigy. And this is the moment where I introduced Kendrick Lamar and Ruby Rose. Looking back at this now, it's such a surreal moment. Cause you gotta remember, this is 2012. The two of them are on the verge of being rock stars. So once we landed in Perth, of course I had to get a photo with Kendrick. So Mixed by Ali invited Ruby Rose and I to Kendrick Lamar's show that night in Perth, which happened to be sold out. So remember, this is 2012. Good Kid Mad City had only been out six weeks. So his shows back then were much smaller. So the point of me telling this story is the importance of documenting your journey. Thankfully for me, my background's in photography. So I've always made a point of taking photos and videos of my creative process. It means that I can add photos and videos to stories just like this one, which makes it 10 times more powerful. So remember, whatever field you're in, make sure you document your process.
Well guys, that's the end of today's episode. If you've made it this far, thanks for listening to me ramble. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you press that button. I look forward to sharing more stories with you soon.